and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street by Dr. Seuss. And yes, this book does belong to Ricky S. Baruga. Published by Vanguard Press, Inc., New York. Book Club Distribution, a beginner book edition distributed by Groiler Enterprises, Incorporated, by arrangements with the original publisher, Vanguard Press. <clears throat> For Helen McSee, mother of the one and original Marco. Copyright 1937 by Theodore Seuss Geisel. Renewed 1964 by Theodore Seuss Geisel. When I leave home to walk to school, Dad always says to me, Marco, keep your eyelids up and see what you can see. When I tell him where I've been and what I think I've seen, he looks at me sternly and says, Your eyesight's much too keen. Stop telling such outlandish tales. Stop turning min minnows into whales. Now what can I say when I go home today? All the long way to school, all the long way back, I've looked and I've looked and I've kept careful track. But all that I've noticed, except my own feet, was a horse and a wagon on Mulberry Street. That's nothing to tell of. That won't do, of course. Just a broken down wagon that's drawn by a horse. That can't be my story. That's only a start. I'll say that a zebra was pulling the cart. And that is a story that no one can beat when I say that I saw it on Mulberry Street. Yes, the zebra is fine, but I think it's a shame. Such a marvelous beast, with a cart that's too that's so tame. The story would really be better to hear if the driver I saw were a charioteer. A golden blue chariot's something to meet, rumbling like thunder down Mulberry Street. No, it won't do at all. A zebra's too small. A reindeer is better. He's fast and he's fleet. And he'd look mighty smart on Old Mulberry Street. Hold on a minute. There's something wrong. A reindeer hates the way it feels to pull a thing that runs on wheels. He'd be much happier instead if he could pull a fancy sled. Hmm. A reindeer and a sleigh. Say... Anyone could think of that. Jack or Fred or Joe or Nat. Say, even Jane could think of that. But it isn't too late to make one little change. A sleigh and an elephant. There's something strange. I'll pick one with plenty of power and size. A blue one with plenty of fun in its eyes. And then, just to give him a little more tone, have a Raja with rubies perched high on the throne. Say... That makes a story that no one can beat when I say that I saw it on Mulberry Street. But now I don't know. It still doesn't seem right. An elephant pulling a thing that's so light would whip around in the air like a kite. But he'd look simply grand with a great big brass band. A band that's so good should have someone to hear it. But it's going so fast, and it's hard to keep near it. I'll pull on a trailer. I know they won't mind, if a man sits and listens while hitched on behind. But now, it, is it fair? Is it fair what I've done? I'll bet those wagons weigh more than a ton. That's really too heavy a load for one beast. I'll give him some helpers. He needs two, at least. But now what worries me is this. Mulberry Street runs right into bliss. Unless there's something I can fix up, there'll be an awful traffic mix-up. It takes police to do the trick, to guide them through where traffic is thick. 
It takes police to do the trick. They'll never crash now. They'll race at top speed with Sergeant Mulnavy, Mulvaney, himself in the lead. The mayor is there, and he thinks it's grand. And he raises his hat, and they dash by the stand. The mayor is there, and the aldermen too, all waving big banners of red, white, and blue. And that is a story that no one can beat when I say that I saw it on Mulberry Street. With a roar in its motor, an airplane appears and dumps on confetti while everyone cheers. And that makes a story that's really not bad, but it still could be better. Suppose that I add... Whoa, look at all this shit. This thing's getting huge. A Chinese boy who eats with sticks. A big magician doing tricks. A ten-foot beard that needs a comb. No time for more. I'm almost home. I swung round the corner and dashed through the gate. I ran up the steps, and I felt simply great. For I had a story that no one could beat, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street. But Dad said quite calmly, Just draw up your stool, and tell me the sights on the way home from school. There was so much to tell, I just couldn't begin, and Dad looked at me sharply and pulled on his chin. He frowned at me sternly, from there on his seat. Was there nothing to look at? No people to greet? Did nothing excite you or make your heart beat? Nothing, I said, glowing red as a beat, but a plain horse and a wagon on Mulberry Street.